Hi, if you're watching this video, the chances are you're subject to a defamation claim. So this video and others I will do uh, are to help you through your defamation journey, which uh, may be easy or it may be very hard. Uh, I certainly wish the best for you, but the information that I'll give you uh, will hopefully help. Uh, first of all, this isn't legal advice. Uh, most of the advice I'll give is about how you deal with this action uh, emotionally, and there will be legal steps along the way, but, um, but it's really important that you look after yourself as a defendant in a defamation action. So for you, as it did for me, the process will start with being served. So someone will come up to you and say, are you Ben Smith? Are you Mary Jones? In my case, are you Rob Pine? And when you acknowledge your identity, they will hand you a bundle of legal papers. And um, they may say you've been served um, and they'll let you know. And um, that can um, be a very straightforward process, but it can be a surprisingly stressful one uh, if something of this nature has never happened to you before. Um, and of course, when you look at the documents that you've been served, uh, you may see that you're being sued for several hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars. Um, it's limitless. So obviously uh, this is a very stressful process and it's going to cause uh, great anxiety and worry for most people. So uh, certainly after being served, I would advise you to take some time out. Uh, take the day off work or business and, and, and go home. And, and uh, what I'd advise you to do quickly is nothing. Uh, decisions made in a hurry after being served with a defamation um, claim, decisions made in a hurry may be regretted later. So I wouldn't do anything quickly. Um, I'd head home and reflect on it and think seriously about um, how you're going to respond and what your approach is going to be. Of course, it's hard, to pe it's hard to tell people not to worry when, in essence, uh, what the plaintiff is doing is trying to take everything you own. So, um, and who knows the motivation? It could be malice, but basically uh, a defamation action has the potential um, to rob you of all your worldly possessions and uh, bankrupt you and destroy your life in, in, many, in many cases. So... Um, it's hard not to worry, but managing that worry and stress will be the key to you surviving this process. Make no mistake. Um, when it does come time to making decisions, you're going to have a number of decisions to make, um, and they'll involve time and money. And it'll depend on a lot of things, including your life stage. Uh, for example, in my case, um, I was sued for several hundred thousand dollars, but I am a 53-year-old, or was a 53-year-old quadriplegic. Um, I don't have a lot of employment years ahead of me. Um, I don't know if I've got a lot of years ahead of me, um, and I have little material assets. So the decision I made was not to put out the call um, for financial contributions. And, you know, it is an option. Uh, to run a GoFundMe account, to contact your family, to contact friends, um, to borrow money, to get as much resources, financial resources assembled as possible to fight the case. And, uh, and, and some people elect to go down that path. But for the reasons I've mentioned, uh, I decided to self-represent. And, uh, and I figured at the end of the day, um, I could lose my job and be bank because of the bankrupt bankruptcy uh, if I lose the case. But at my age and with my um, nature of my assets, uh, that was the best option for me to self-represent. Maybe if I was younger, I would, would have made a different decision. I'm not sure. You will have to reflect on your position, how your assets are held, how much money you have, and, and what the implications of bankruptcy are. Uh, for some people, if you're, a, if you're in the business community or, or hold elected office, uh, the consequences of bankruptcy um, can be quite dire. They can cost you your job. I actually do hold such an elected office, uh, but at the end of the day, um, as I say, I'm, I'm towards the end of my career, so that's informed my decision. You're going to have to make your own decision 
based on time and money and your life circumstance. Um, but certainly a factor to take into consideration is unless you are very cashed up, um, you are, if you're being sued by someone who may be uh, a CEO of a corporation or the like, um, you're very unable to be ma able to match them dollar for dollar in a case. So um, that's not to, uh, to advise you not to engage a solicitor. If you can engage, you're going to have to get legal advice at some point, but uh, the extent to which you embrace legal advice and, and employ the uh, best possible counsel you can, um, obviously that's going to have big financial impacts. So that's something else um, you have to consider very, very seriously and don't make that decision in a hurry. There is no hurry. Uh, it's something you reflect on and talk about. I guess the main message I'd like to get across to you here is ring fence this defamation claim. Um, any defamation claim has the possibility of poisoning your own life and poisoning your relationship with others. Uh, make no mistake, I've seen the stress having these sort of civil actions lodged against people that the stress that can do and the harm it can do. It destroys marriages, um, it can affect your mental health, it can be a big problem. So my key message today is, for example, um, if you're deciding you're going to self-represent, lay yourself two hours on a Saturday when you're going to work on your legals. Don't let it take more time off you. Otherwise, you could be, look, you know, two years down the track, you wasted a big portion of your life on this case. Really, the plaintiffs won anyway because of the cost you've incurred, um, the personal cost you've incurred. So just as I say to try and silo this legal action in terms of what time of the week you work on it, also you need to silo it in terms of your mind. So you can be thinking about this all day, every day uh, and all week. You can think about it nonstop. So it's very important that you adopt some mindfulness strategies so that when you're at work, you're at work. You're not thinking about this defamation claim. When you're with your family, you are with your family, enjoying their company and not um, having this defamation claim or other civil matter um, clouding your thoughts, hanging over you like a proverbial sword of Damocles. Um, that's not going to be good for you and that's not going to be good for your relationships. It's not easy to do, especially when you're going to sleep at night, but you really have to practice mindfulness so this matter is not in your mind dominating your thoughts and affecting your emotions and relationships. So really silo it. Silo it in what time of the week you work on it and silo it in your mind so that there's a little part of your mind that um, where you store your response to this defamation action and you don't let it affect uh, the rest of your mind, the rest of your life. Because you need to get on with your life for what may be uh, a period of 12 months, two years until this matter's finalised. I hope that's not the case for you, but it's a real possibility. Um, as I say, this isn't an option for uh, opportunity for me to give legal advice, but one thing I would say, if you're a, an ordinary person, a person of a reasonable means, I would, um, after due course, at least consider the option of an apology. And, you know, often when that option is considered, people say, but, but what I said was true, or I believe what I said. Um, not apologising uh, is really a luxury uh, of the rich when it comes to the civil law and matters of defamation in particular. Um, if you offer an apology and the plaintiff accepts, go ahead and apologise. The matter goes away. It's out of your life quickly and, and you've apologised. Um, you know, actually the sincerity of the apology, um, you've got to offer a sincere apology. But the matter, the fact of the matter is that it'll be forgotten about in, in days or weeks and, and you'll have the opportunity to get on with your life. And, uh, and the other important point uh, in offering an apology, if the plaintiff just says, no, that's not good enough, I want my day in court, well, that'll reflect on them uh, later on because um, they've made a determination that, that apology wasn't good enough for them and they're going to put uh, the court to great expense and time. And, um, and, and hopefully that will weigh against them uh, when judges or, or people look at the matter down the track, the fact that despite an apology, they still wanted to um, engage and drag, drag the matter through the court. So I would consider offering an apology and quite strongly advise 
uh, to do that. And if it's rejected, it's also been a good strategic approach uh, nonetheless. So look, um, your matter may be resolved at this stage. Maybe it won't be. Um, but that's the end of this video because I really wanted to focus on um, the personal mental health management of, of what can be a very stressful situation. And how you mentioned that is really important. So in my next video, uh, we'll look at um, decisions around uh, engaging a solicitor and what you do in that space because you will require at least some legal advice unless you're well legally trained. Okay, thank you for, um, for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful and hopefully I'll be able to provide uh, more assistance with the next video. Bye for now.